How's up, Halo fans, and welcome back to the Halo Infinite News Channel. I'm your host, Mayor Reynolds, and in this video, we're going to talk about a possible confirmation that the Flood are still on Zeta Halo, where Halo Infinite takes place. There's been a big debate over whether the Flood should come back to Halo after Halo 4 and 5. A lot of people hated fighting the Flood back in the day. A lot of people love fighting the Flood, but there's definitely been a debate about what they did for the Halo sandbox, what they did for the Halo narrative in the story. And it's one way or another, the Flood, uh, and because of Zeta Halo and the Flood's history on Zeta Halo, they're going to play a role in the story of Halo Infinite, at least we expect. But we have some stuff from the new Halo Point of Light book, which just came out, which I'm listening to on Audible right now, which can possibly confirms that there are still active Halo specimens on Zeta Halo. So it doesn't confirm necessarily that the Flood, you're going to be fighting the Flood in Halo Infinite. I expect that we will. I think that we really need those units that, that press you like the flood did, you know, coming at you like a flood and, uh, you know, really make you feel that that fear while you're fighting and just the endless, you know, it, it really shakes up the battlefield in a way that, that Covenant, Banished, uh, you know, every enemy that we have fought in Halo uh, uh, cannot, they cannot match that. So. Let's take a look. I'm going to explain the Flood's history with Zeta Halo a little bit. I'm not going to go into full detail. This isn't going to be a 30-minute video. There are channels that have videos like that. Explaining Zeta Halo's history, uh, you know, this isn't that video. This is going to be a quicker, primer-type video. So I'm going to switch my view over to show you guys some images, and we'll get right into this here. So this is the new book, Halo Point of Light, that just came out. If you don't know... This is one of the main characters, Ryan, and this is the current version of who we knew as 343 Guilty Spark, or in a former life, a human known as Chakus. Uh, if you don't know that whole backstory, 343 Guilty Spark was once a human who was composed, converted into what we know as 343 Guilty Spark. Now he looks like this. He is uh, looking a lot different than the monitor that we knew. Anyway, in Halo Point of Light, spoilers, uh, this, this takes place in the year 2558. Uh, Ryan and Spark, they visit Zeta Halo. They're on a mission from the Librarian, and they end up on Zeta Halo. And Spark drops a whole bunch of uh, little details that, that bring us up to speed on where Zeta Halo is now. So back in the day, Zeta Halo, Zeta Halo has a crazy dark history, and you should really listen to it. But Zeta Halo was the home of the Primordial, who was the last living precursor slash first flood grave mine he had both so the precursors created basically everything in the galaxy and the primordial had all of those memories of how the world came to be how the precursors created everything what their mission was what everything was created for so on and so forth the forerunners went on their ethnic cleansing of of the precursors because Basically, humans had been uh, chosen to inherit the mantle of responsibility instead. Uh, so the Forerunners believed. Primordial later confirms that. But he was one of the last living precursors. And uh, he he corrupted Mendicant Bias, a Forerunner AI, basically with the the Rampancy Plague. Uh, some, some call it a, a different variant, almost like the Flood. Imagine like if the Flood infected an AI. And uh, basically, those two, the Primordial and Mendicant Bias, this formerly super powerful AI that was uh, running all of the Halo arrays, but his core was on Zeta Halo. Don't forget that, because in this book, it's confirmed that his heart, his core, Mendicant Bias, is still on Zeta Halo. And it's Mendicant Bias, and it's the Primordial who unleash the Flood upon the world as we know. Now, the two team up, they unleash the Flood across Zeta Halo, and they eventually, you know, that is the cause of everything that happens, the firing of the Halo rings, all that stuff. But, so the Primordial is no longer there because the Primordial essentially composed himself into the collective consciousness of the Flood. So his, his form, his original form as a precursor or as this kind of Flood corrupted, uh, precursor is gone, obliterated, posed, whatever. But any grave mind that we come across, including the one that was in Halo 2 and 3, 
is the essence of the primordial any grave mind contains the essence of the primordial all of his memories everything we're talking hundreds of thousands of millennia years whatever the complete history of all life in every galaxy period so with all that said we know the primordial was there we know that the flood were definitely present there and were unleashed on zeta halo mendicant bias was there and his core is confirmed to still be there but on top of all of that spark confirms in point of light when they arrive when these characters arrive at zeta halo for their mission that there is without a doubt there would used to be flood specimens underground that were preserved there so they 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 blatantly ask the human characters blatantly ask if there's still flood specimens on zeta halo and spark basically says he can't confirm that they're still there you know he doesn't have first-hand knowledge that they're still there he can't say yes but there's really no reason for them not to be unless something happened that he's unaware of then those flood specimens are still there underground if that's not basically a confirmation that flood are still whether it's in stasis underground or whatever on zeta halo and are probably going to get out somehow and and make themselves known and be enemies again in halo infinite i don't know what is if you just take a step back and if you look at uh here's here's some pictures of the primordial or uh, concept art by the way um there's ver different variants of him based on his descriptions in the forerunner trilogy of books uh, and he has a really awesome look i think uh come with, kind of like a gray vine he's kind of described kind of looking as a, like as a scorpion uh in some way almost like a godlike scorpion all powerful super intelligent probably the most intelligent being that the halo universe has ever known um, for those of you who don't know there are also underground cities on zeta halo where humans and forerunners actually used to live so you know the the old halo when you think back to halo ce you think of plenty of stuff on the surface uh you know you know you, you know what the surface of a halo looks like but there's these substructures uh within zeta halo and those are definitely still there because the characters go down into them and uh describe them i'm not going to give too many more spoilers about that but again when you think about why are we going to zeta halo why has 343 chosen zeta halo as the setting for this game uh i think that tells you a lot they could have gone in any direction they wanted after the storyline of of halo 4 and halo 5 where they set this uh you know we went to requiem they specific, specifically not specifically chose zeta halo why would they do that i think it's because the primordial was there mendicant bias was there it has a huge history with the flood and what better way to reintroduce the flood and go back where a lot of this started which is zeta halo they could have chosen any halo to go to the storyline in a number of ways but they specifically chose the one with connections to the primordial mendicant bias and the flood and i, I don't even know if they're going to reveal to us that the flood are back before uh, halo infinite releases i think it would be awesome if they did not if you know we think we're just fighting the banished and and you know that's the main war and then just like halo one the flood hit you out of nowhere like you're just you're in this mission and then oh my god the flood are unleashed like and you didn't know about it just we're playing the campaign they never show it off i, I think that'd be an incredible experience both the new players to, to experience that oh my god where why who are these flood what are the where where did they come from it's gonna suck them down a rabbit hole also classic halo fans like myself it's gonna be like reliving halo ce and you, you're gonna know how bad the flood are right so when you see them again it's gonna be like not nah, like i thought we were done with this oh my god and again i think it would shake up the sandbox a lot and uh halo point of light really confirms this i think that there's still halo, uh flood specimens on zeta halo where halo infinite takes place and if you uh if you compare this book this book takes place in the year 2558 okay and it's it feels like these are being done to set up a lot of stuff for halo infinite because halo infinite takes place in 2560 it's two years after these books so these books are being deliberately written 
to help put us, you know, get us up to speed. What's going on between kind of connect the storyline to Halo Infinite. So I definitely think this is confirmation. The flood are going to be in Halo Infinite. It's not actual confirmation. It's not a developer. It's not a leak. But I think everything is pointing to the flood being enemies that we will fight again in Halo Infinite. So that's it for this video, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more Halo Infinite news. I'm going to be bringing it to you as often as I can. Uh, like the video to push it up in the YouTube algorithm. Drop a comment down below if you want to fight the flood again or if you'd just rather not, if you don't want to deal with them. Uh, which I think there's going to be a lot of people who feel strongly both ways. But I think the Halo story and uh, combat is best with the flood present. So we'll see what the game holds. Can't wait to play it. See you in the next video.